I am a simple man. If I see a handheld gaming device on a shelf for £7 on clearance, you can bet your bottom dollar that I am gonna buy it. And would you believe me if I told you that this bargain bucket handheld gaming device is actually not really that bad? Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. So this here is the Orb Retro Handheld Console. I randomly stumbled across this while I was on a Christmas family reunion in Dorset here in England. Of course I absolutely couldn't pass up the chance to share this little thing with you, in the same way that I couldn't pass up the chance to buy it when it was on clearance. Now just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to call this the Orb from now on. It's a rather typical plastic shelf package product no doubt designed to stay on a hook for many many years until it goes on clearance and some weirdo buys it up for cheap. It advertises over 158 bit games included. There are some screenshots on the back and, huh, you know what, that guy kinda looks familiar. Anyway, let's go ahead and cut this guy open, and uh, I severed the top of the manual, and I dropped it as well, so good start. Absorb yourself in the world of gaming and gadgets, very nice. So it turns out that this device isn't actually this company's first rodeo, and they have a few cool items for sale. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a short bow for your smartphone. How do I get one of those? Anyway, they include a relatively extensive manual that even has a troubleshooting guide, which, hey, I appreciate it. Now let's take a look at the gadget itself. At first glance, I can definitely tell this has been on the shelf for some time, I'm guessing a year or more. There's a lot of wear on the plastic, or maybe that's just how the device itself is out of the box, I don't know. Either way, it's very tiny and very light. There's a power switch, a strangely singular volume button, and a lanyard strap beneath the battery cover, and that's pretty much it for this. Here it is next to the MiU Mini, because of course I gotta compare these. It's actually a little bit thicker than the MiU Mini, and that's due to this ugly, very narrow battery bump, but it is about the same height and a little bit narrower than the MiU Mini as well. In the hands it feels, well, Fine, just like a toy, which I guess it is, really. The buttons, though, are unfortunately not so great. They're really light and pressed down into the case, actually deeper than flush, which feels pretty bad. I wasn't necessarily expecting this to win any ergonomics or quality awards, though, bear that in mind. But all that said, though, I actually really like the size of this device. I kind of feel like this has convinced me that we could indeed go smaller than the MiU Mini for a one-handed device as long as the hardware was capable of being that small. And by the way, if you didn't know, apparently Anbronik is working on a micro device, and it looks kind of similar to this in size, so we'll have to see how that comes out, if it does indeed come to fruition. Anyway, I'm going to breeze through this, so let's pop in some batteries. There's three AAA batteries needed, which cost 75% of the console itself. Here's the wrist strap that was inside the battery door. However, for some reason it straps onto the upper corner, not the lower one, which I find kind of odd. I think that if this was on your keyring, it might make sense, because the screen isn't going to be swinging around. But when you're actually playing, you really don't want to lanyard up the top here, so I don't know. I kind of find it hard to criticize anything about this, given the nature of the thing, but... I would prefer the strap to be on the bottom. So, the moment of truth, let's go ahead and turn it on. Alright, so this is honestly kind of cute. There's some plucky music playing, and a pretty dim but not completely terrible display actually. Unfortunately though, for some reason my camera, no matter what settings I used, just did not cooperate with this device at all. I'd say the display looks probably about 60% brighter in real life than it does in this footage. It just didn't pick it up, so we're just gonna have to move on as is. You basically just get a list of all 151 po uh, I mean included games, and that's pretty much it. By the way, I should let you know that the operating system, if you want to call it that on this device, is pretty darn bad. Actually, the select button is just a hard reset that powers off and powers on the device. And every time you do that, i.e. every time you leave a game and go back to the menu, the volume is actually reset to the maximum volume, so you have to readjust it every time. It's not that great, but I feel like it's kind of a waste of time to comment too much on the OS here. So let's go ahead and jump right into the first game, Matchstick Man. And this is actually a pretty fun basic fighting game. Jeez, actually I feel like I'm back on Newgrounds in the mid 2000s and I'm not sure that's a good feeling. Anyway, I like the animation a lot and the combat's pretty fine. There's like a two tiered system where you can jump up onto this line in the background. Um, but yeah, this is, I mean, it's a pretty serviceable game. Alright, well let's just move straight on to the next game, Tank War. And hold on, wait a minute. 
This music sounds kind of familiar to me, although I'm not quite sure I can put my finger on it. Ah, that's what it is. Anyway, I kind of thought there was like a 99% chance there would be some plagiarism here, but the second game? Jeez, that's very bold of these developers. Anyway, it's a simple tank game, but again, it's serviceable and a little bit fun. I have zero complaints about this, honestly. Roll around, blast stuff, listening to the flying battery zone music from Sonic 3. Why the heck not? Okay, time to get serious though. This next game called The Agent is actually really, really cool, and I like it a lot. It's definitely my favorite game on the system. It's a pseudo FPS, kind of virtual cop type of game. You move the cursor with the D-pad and you shoot with A as the little men run in and shoot at you. And cross my heart, this game is just insanely fun. I love the little graphics, how the gun's in the corner like a modern FPS, and yet it has this classic kind of target range gameplay. It's just really fun. I, I, I cannot kid you, this is super fun. I feel like I'm putting my reputation on the line here, but I really, really, really like this game, and I think it's great. And there's quite a few levels as well. I got into level 6, and it was still going, so yeah, I don't know. Once again, perfectly serviceable fun. Here's a helicopter game, and this is one of the games on the system that is pretty clunky. I don't know why the frame rate is just dead slow on this. Kind of unplayable, to be honest. So let's go on here, and here's a more demandingly named Where's My Water clone, named Give Me Water. It's a little slow to control, but it does work, and there's at least four or five stages, at least as far as I've played. And yeah, look, you put the pipes where they're supposed to go, you hit the button, the water drains out, the fish is happy. Sure, why not? Here's a 1942 clone called War of Islands, and it's... ah, jeez. This music is somehow igniting a manly fire of nostalgia in my heart. I feel like I need to swing a broadsword right now. Anyway, this one is a little bit clunky too, it's not great. Moving on, there's even an Astro Boy clone of all things to have on this device, an Astro Boy clone is just super weird. And then there's also a Contra-like game with, hey, wait a minute, I know that guy. And I don't think he's supposed to be here. Anyway, the point is there's a surprising variety of games here. There's puzzles, shoot 'em ups sport games, and I really cannot deny that a lot of them are really fun little distractions. I would say this is perfect for distracting a child on Christmas morning whilst you get lunch ready. Or maybe perfect for a 30-something YouTube nerd to spend his spare time and money on. Something I do find interesting though, is that most of these games share elements like health bars, score counters, and stuff like that. So I think they actually built a game engine to build these games in. I would love to get a look at that engine, I bet it's completely spaghetti code. Hold on a second, the music in this game sounds kind of familiar too. Anyway, would you be surprised if I told you that this device absolutely has a killer app? This is the game I've spent the longest time on. In fact, I'm almost ashamed to say that I ran these brand new Energizer batteries completely dead while playing this game. Yep, it's 2048. This thing actually has a respectable port of 2048 and it is so insanely addictive that I just could not stop playing it at all. I was so mind-numbingly hooked on playing this and you know what? It was incredibly fun and super easy to play on this tiny one-handed device. Just like I do with my Miu Mini, I was kind of just playing with this, 
whenever I was cooking or just doing something else. I just had this little device in my hand and I was probably playing 2048. So yeah, I should probably sum up before I let this video get out of hand. The Orb Retro Handheld Console is exactly what it is. It's a novelty gift of whacked together mini games in a super cheap stocking stuffer package. And you know what? I like it. Why the heck not? If I was on a train and my phone was dead and I had no music and no laptop, no emulation handheld around, no book, no snacks, no coloring book and pencils, no oil paints, no lottery scratch offs, no travel pillow to fall asleep on, no other human being to talk to, I would not be entirely disappointed to find this little device buried in the bottom of my bag, having tossed it there on the way home from the Christmas family gathering last year. And to be honest, I think that's actually a pretty good amount of praise for what this device is. I'm surprised I didn't want to just throw it in the trash right after opening it first time, let alone that I actually find it kind of adorable, serviceable, and even, even just a little bit fun too. It's simple, it's cheap, it is exactly what it is. Good stuff indeed and touche orb, Touche. That's it for this fun little video. If you liked it, please go ahead and leave a like on the video and comment down below if you have one of these weird 150 in one game consoles and if you like one or recommend it or if you hate it and I'm just a complete psycho for even putting this video out there. Please subscribe to my channel if you liked it for more retro gaming and tech content like this. This has been Shem from Retro Breeze and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.